decisions that work on issues that are similar. Uh, Professor Watcher is uh, an architect, a urbanist, uh, a scholar of the commons, and he accepted to come here to share some thoughts about uh, some comparison and some uh, restrictions that our mode of thought is producing in the way in which we face the issues of urbanism and in particular the water. <coughs> thank you. This is stuff. Thank you very much for joining us. I, I say thank you. Um, and it's, I'm very, I'm very, I'm very pleased uh, to be here and uh, and to meet you. And um, what I want to do with is, is share a question, a questioning process that I'm going through. Uh, so um, don't expect that I, I, I'll be talking with, about something that I um, that I have full grasp on. Uh, uh, and probably you will help me in, in, my, in my, my own questioning. What I usually say to uh, the students who want to uh, um, study city planning is two things. First of all, oh, three, congratulations. <laughs> um, because if you want to study city planning or environmental planning, it means that you don't think that the world is doomed, that it's a place that there's nothing one can do about it, that, that you have to be either cynical about or hedonistic about. Um, the world, if you, if you want to study city planning or if you're studying what you're studying here, with which, en plus, you will never make money, um, it's because you have another purpose. And uh, you believe that the world is not doomed. You believe that something can be done about it. And you believe that you have to do something about it. That that's, you, it's everyone's doing. It's not a thing where, well, someone has to do something about it. You're the someone. Or they will come up with some technological answers. Who's the they? Um, so this is what I tell them. Another thing I tell them is it, you ha it, it has to be something funny. It has to be amusing. You have to have fun. Because if you, if you want to deal with things like that, you have to be enthusiastic. Um, you have to be enthusiastic. And, 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 and that is some, sometimes difficult to, to, uh, to say. You have to love doing it because you have to love um, you, 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 you come to a, a new city that you discover. There are people living there, or uh, uh, just any new place, and they're just people like you. They have families, someone loves them, they have disputes with someone, they have um, uh, sorrows. And, and, and in a certain way, you have to love these people. Otherwise, don't do it. I mean, otherwise you're just a, a bureaucrat, and uh, and they're, they're not, you know, they're not someone. They're <coughs> numbers, they're statistics. So that's maybe the thing where mm, that is the hardest for me to explain to the students that you have to be, you have to do it with love. You have to be enthusiastic and do it with love. Okay. Now, another thing is you have to. Uh, you have to be wanting to learn things. You have, you have to be curious. You know, you have to question things. Why is it like that? And and, and let people tickle you. You know, when what because and, and that's going to be the purpose of what I'm going to show you. Because very often you don't see what is right in front of you. Because because when when you grow up, you grow up with. Um, <coughs> I'm, I'm, I'm probably saying things that you've heard before, but you grew up with, um, mm, we call them des oeillères, like a horse has, in order to, to walk straight. And these are given by your education, by your family, by, and, 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 and it might be such a, a thing that this is a shame. But someone has been telling you that it was a window. This is something you cannot see through. But some, someone told you, this is the landscape. This is, this, and, and, and unless someone comes to you and says, 
or, or make, let's make it more simple, or my metaphor. Unless someone comes to me and says, you know, you, you, should, you can just open the damn thing. It's very hard to go through that process yourself. But it helps if you keep wandering. I mean, if you, if you don't think, if you start not taking things for granted, one thing you, you cannot for, take for granted is anything that is produced by culture. And, and probably the, one of the biggest problems we have now in the Western world is that we have mm, uh, we we have transformed the production of our culture into facts, into events, into things. A tree is a thing. A law is not a thing. It's a production of culture. Uh, gross natural product is not a thing. It's a production of culture. It's a convention. And you can have another convention, and, and by using that other convention, the country is, might not be bankrupt, because it's just a convention. And bankruptcy is also a production of culture. It's not a disease. OK, let's go into, the, to, into this. How do I do it? <laughs> just push. Push the uh, yeah, I'm, India. I'm there we go. Um, I didn't know it would be doing that. For better and for worse, that marriage. <laughs> for better and for worse, because things always come with this, the, the coin always has two sides, and like one person has a quality, that quality hides always symmet symmetrically something wrong about that person. So the first time, it's going to be about Maya. Uh, because um, chance somehow brought me to spend a lot of time there recently. And the first time, someone took me on a little boat in Miami. I was stunned. So the first time I go to Miami, the next day someone takes me on a boat, which is, which is inter interesting because I, I didn't see it. I arrived at night. I didn't drive. Uh, I didn't see anything until someone took me on a boat. about sea level. It should, have, it should have popped now. Upon my first visit, so this text also, I was amazed when I, when I was on that little boat <coughs> because I had the same feeling that I've, I, I had when I first came to Venice 30 years earlier. That it's a city built not on land, but on water. Now it's modern, it's tropical, it's all of this, but it's on water. It's, it's, it's fascinating. This is a, there's a lot of similarities. This is my daughter. <laughs> the little brown thing. There's a port. There's one in Venice. There's a canal. It's called uh, Miami River. I don't have to tell you the name of the other one. There's an aqua alta. Also. So, I started wondering, uh, if it looks so much like Venice, of course, what do they do when the water is high? And of course, I, as a city environment planner, I know seawater level is rising. And, and, and I live in Belgium, where we have similar problems to, the, to Holland. We have a lot of land that was gained on water, and that, that is below sea level already. And, and it's, uh, it's, it's livable because we have dikes and levees and, 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 and water walls. Uh, but, but it's an issue because these were never uh, thought for the rise that we are going to um, live with in the, in the coming decades. Now, let's look at facts. Everything that's in <coughs> is below five foot. So this is, this is a... Most predictions say that in 100 years will be 5 foot high, meter 50. So all of this disappears. And uh, interestingly, so all, all, all of this is underwater. This, these parts become islands. And very interestingly, this is their nuclear plant that's going to be below sea level. And so in Virginia Key, it's the main um, water waste treatment um, plant. It will also be below sea level. And that nothing is being done about that. Uh, it's interesting because 
Well, we developed that. It's interesting because... Of course, you know, in Venice, they've been stealing a lot of money about that. Yeah. By, by, by the, and, like and it, it, what's like interesting is when they built the, the Turkey Point a nuclear plant, I know for a fact because my wife's uncle is a judge, and his first um, <coughs> action as a, as a young judge was to challenge the government about that. Because he said, it's so, it's so close to Cuba. It, it's late 50s, uh, uh, it's late, no, mid 60s. He said, we're, below, we're, we're, we're within um, miss, missile range from Cuba. Uh, has this been looked into? And actually, they had never done that. You know, uh, uh, every authority said, well, it's, it's not my job to do this. And the army said, uh, uh, we weren't asked. The guys from the plant said, well, it's not in, in, it's, it's not in, in our specs. Nobody said in the specs we had to be uh, 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 safe from bombing. And so it, it wasn't done. Sea level. Um, so now we already know that um, in the last 30 years there was a half <coughs> foot, uh, 12 cent centimeter rise of water. Um, and, um, and, and these are the prediction, predictions. By, by the, uh, a, the, a, a local authority, by, by uh, Southeast Florida, by one of these authorities. And this is the geological situation, which is <coughs> interesting because um, Florida is basically, um, was basically uh, wetlands, the panhandle, the, the, the lower part of Florida. It's, uh, the Everglades were everywhere. So it's basically a place where uh, uh, fresh water and salt water meet, and you have saline water, you have a mixture. And, and um, <coughs> the land is limestone, and limestone is like a sponge. Limestone is a mixture of clay, and sand, and it has neither the quality of, of, of either. It, it, has a, it, it is not as good as sand for building and not as good as clay for building. It's porous. And you have, you have layers of limestone, and under these layers of lim limestone, you, have a you can have every now and then a very thin layer of pure clay, <coughs> and that is a caging an aquifer of fresh water. And that fresh water comes from 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 the inside, you know, it comes from the mountains. It comes from, I think, it comes basically from the Appalachian. And that fresh water is encaved, which means that every time you drill to get it, you weaken the the protected layer. Every time you build a building with deep foundation, you may arm that. And so. You have a high risk of, uh, of uh, freshwater con con uh, uh, um, contamination by the, by the salt water in, in, in Florida. For a very long period of time, until the mid 70s, I think, the whole attitude was to dry, uh, um, to, to, to dry the Everglades made so, so, so people could live there, to develop it. And then they realized that the Everglades were actually producing fresh water. This is a, an issue that you like. It was producing unexpected. Uh, it was not producing. Well, it's actually producing because uh, it was at least delivering. It was the source of drinking water for about, in the 70s, about 8 million people in the panhandle. Uh, and as they were developing it and building on it, drying it, they realized that the cost of bringing fresh water from another source would be so high that it was not worth it. It, it's, it's maybe one, it, it might be one of the first times. Uh, it's, it's an interesting case where in America, all of a sudden, someone said, listen, guys, if we keep doing this, where are we going to get our drinking water? And so they started. Uh, 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 and it didn't really work. They started two things. They changed the Everglades into 
from a fact into an economical data. And they said if you dry, if you, if, you, if you make it livable, it doesn't produce water. We lose a lot of money because we have to produce water, fresh water, or bring fresh water from other sources. And so they said you can, you can develop Everglades, but then you have to return land to the Everglades. But if the land that was developed previously, if you return it to the Everglades, you don't return the ecosystem, you just return the land. But there's no alligators left, there's no, uh, no um, vegetation, there's, there's nothing. Of, you can't compare things. I mean, it's like, mm, it's, 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 it's exactly the same thing as when they said, listen, the, the Native American population is the same as when we, now, it's, it, it, it has reached the same level as, as before they were slaughtered, so we're good. Les comptes sont bons. So the situation is really interesting because whatever they do, the, the, the land in porous, even if you build levees or uh, uh, dikes or, or um, what they call seawalls, because it's porous, it's going to contaminate from, from underneath. And this is another data that's interesting, is that the, the, uh, um, the tides, uh, the increase over the last year, so the, 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 tide, the, the uh, tide strength is, is, is uh, increasing. And you can see it, it, it seems to be slowly, it, it, slow, but it's accelerating. And these, this is data from, this is interesting, <coughs> data from the last big hurricane, which is, was in 92, because clim climate episodes are also uh, uh, strengthening. <laughs> this is interesting. Data permanence before worst conditions. So they have no info on what's happening to the <coughs> because the, 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 the captors stopped capting. Uh, uh, Stop gathering the data before the worst, uh, the, the strongest winds hit the planet. So what are they doing about it? Well, they decided to just rise above. <laughs> and if you look at uh, Miami, uh, Miami Beach rising above, uh, if you look at the site, it just says. It's, a, it's combative. We're, we're, we're going to fight the sucker. You know, we're, 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 we're teaching. And so what are they doing? They're water's rising, rising, so they're rising the streets. And they're rising the streets, and if you had a, a, a ground floor, you'd have a basement. And so they say new buildings should have a very high ceiling ground floor, so you can raise the floor progressively. But what about all the older buildings? Well, good news, they're worth peanuts. Only the land is worth something. But the buildings, even insurance companies do not want to insure uh, ground floors anymore. And it, it started in, you, you know, you're familiar with, with, with Miami Beach? This started in an in air in by, by a Mayor Levine, and he started, in, in, he started this campaign, it's, it's nearly, it's some, I think it's three hundred thousand million dollars rising above in Miami Beach. It's a lot of money. And he started it in, in a park called Sunset Harbor. Guess what? He owns real estate there. <laughs> <laughs> he started, but he was very clever. It was flooded, and he campaigned on a canoe on Purdy Avenue, which is central in, in, in Sunset Harbor. He was, and so there was the, the people were filming him, and he was on a canoe and saying, listen, look at that. If you're an old person, an ambulance cannot come and pick you up. We have to rise above. What's also interesting, it was flooded due to stormwater. So the, this whole campaign is actually aimed at doing something on stormwater flooding not really on seawater rising, which is another issue, even, even though they're co-substantive. Um, he's actually dealing only with stormwater flooding and the fact that the sewer system cannot cope with the quantity of water. So rising above, installing pumps, 
and installing devices so that the water can uh, reflect from, from the wastewater system. Of course, I think it raises a series of questions. What do you rise it above with? The, 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 where do you get the materials, the stuff? I couldn't find the info. Where do you get it? Did you buy it from some? They, they don't have any sand. They, they don't have anything. Where, where, where do you get it? How high must you rise? I mean, because it's got, the water's going to keep rising, so they've decided to do three foot. Why not five? You know, and what are they going to do? They're going to, you know, in, in another 10 years, they're going to add a foot? Okay, let's, who wants a foot more, you know? And another thing is, where, where do you stop? Where have you decided that it's not worth rising anymore? Where, how, how, how? And, 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 and what about, you know, big objects like an airport, like a, a railroad? When, 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 when are those going to be risen? I didn't find no, I, no, I didn't find the answers. I didn't even find the questions. So this is what they're doing, and this is the, the building that the insurance company no longer wants to insure as a ground floor because it says they say it's a, it's a basement, and, and that's not the same way because basement, of course, they're going to be flooded. So if you have your restaurant there, your business plan. Uh, but anyway, uh, what's happening now already in Miami is that insurance company do not want to insure water jet. They say you can't insure. So what they're doing, they've elevated the street, uh, they've capped it, uh, uh, drainage, stone drainage, and then it goes to a pump. And then all the water, all the water, fresh water, it all goes to Virginia Key. Well, it, it's mixed with uh, wastewater from, you know, uh, bathrooms and... And then they, they say they, they purify it 90% and they dump it in, into the sea. Well, they could reuse it because 90% is pretty damn clean. No, they go... And the, what is also interesting is why they have to uh, bring it to Virginia Key. The land is flat. So the sewer system has to be under pressure because there's no grade. And the sewage, the whole sewage system in Miami was so old and made of metal that it started leaking. And it was leaking into porous soil. So eventually, as it was leaking, it was contaminating the ocean. Now, in these, in the, in the wastewater, there's lots, lots of bacteria. They actually developed human feces. One of them is called Facetis necrophagis. It's a flesh-eating bacteria. When the ocean reaches the temperature of the, of, of the human body, 35 degrees Celsius, which happens in the summer, that bacteria is really happy. If that bacteria enters your body and you have a weak immune system, it will start eating the flesh, and there's no stopping it, only amputation. No, it's true. There's very few cases, but the, this, I, I discussed it with a guy from water management at Miami Beach City Hall. I said, this is an urban legend, come on. He said, absolutely not. It's, it's, it's the truth. So if you cut yourself shaving, then it's amputation. <laughs> And no, he's, and, and actually, um, uh, uh, Miami Beach lost in the lawsuit with um, envi environmental, environmental protection uh, on, uh, administration. What's it called? Agency. Or agency. Where, 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 where Trump has designated a, 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 a climatoseptical yes. <laughs> as a new director. But anyway, Miami Beach lost a lawsuit, and that lawsuit said. Uh, they were. They have to change the whole sewer system within um, um, uh, 25 years, I think. And, 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 and I used to be renting a small condo, and, and I know it's happening because all of a sudden I, I couldn't see anything from my windows anymore because they they set a huge 
um, generator because they were drilling what they call <coughs> the redundant uh, um, sewing system, sewer, uh, uh, wastewater system. <coughs> in, on the in internet, they call it um, Miami Beach redundant uh, uh, wastewater uh, system. When actually it's not redundant, it's just the old one is too dangerous, but they don't want to say it so much. You know, they don't, don't want. They don't want to tell people, listen, we're leaking uh, bacteria that's going to eat you eventually. <laughs> But you have information on, on you do get information on, on, on bacteria, bacteria uh, infesting uh, the ocean and the bay on, on, on site. So this is what they're doing. Rising above, building sea uh, water, uh, sea walls, and, 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 and installing pumps. Now the funny thing about the sea walls is that if, if, if you're applying for a building permit, then you will have to build a seawall. I mean, it will be a, con a condition. Okay? But as long as you don't, there's no way they can enforce it. And as long, even if the seawall was efficient, which, is, which it is not, as long as someone has kept the breach open, it doesn't work. It's going to hold the water in. So do, you, do you accept to get questions meanwhile, or you prefer yeah, to get them? Yeah, but, uh, but she has a question. Yeah. I was just wondering, as you're describing the problematic, I'm trying to understand how much this was the original position of the city, where it was built, versus how much is uh, the policies of the city, the government, versus how much is how strong maybe the, the business side in the city is. So is there a story and understanding of the balance? Um, can you can we do it like a, a, a movie where I'm placing elements of the intrigue and then and, and then and then <laughs> this is the and, okay and and then because otherwise I'm going to lose my uh, may the this effect so will will these measures do it no and they won't because because it's not enough because the, because that's not the question yet. Miami develops at an unprecedented pace. This, this is all, this is Brigo. Miami River is over there. I, 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 I can't remember the word. This is Biscayne Key, I think. I'm oh, sorry, did I hear that? Yeah. And, um, and these are all the, and most of them, these are units, these are dwellings, these are not offices, these are uh, condos for people to, to rent or, or to buy. Um, there's one thing that's interesting if you look at touch this. It. Touch the screen. Again? Yeah. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> if, if, what, what, one thing that is really amusing is you will see that mo all of these buildings, they have this both, both thing there at the bottom. And these are here. These are actually parking spaces. Every building is built on the first five or ten stories of parking space. So if you walk in the street, basically what you see is one layer of shops in Miami, not, not, not in Miami Beach, but in Miami and, and Brickell, and then five stories of, of, of blind windows, I mean dark windows, and then, and then the bed, but you have to look like that, then you, you can see these fantastic uh, buildings that you see <coughs> on the ocean. Because the parking spaces cannot be dug into the, 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 the soil. The soil is a sponge. It's, it's completely wet. Does that make any sense? Does it make any sense to keep building so many units in a place that is going to face a a, 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 an incredible water problem. I, I, <laughs> isn't it worrisome? <laughs> Doesn't it bring memories of déjà vu? Have, if it, don't we have, at least in the Western mythology, don't we have stories of flooding? These two good ones. Noah? 
and hands. And why were we flooded? Because we were good. <laughs> There's a lot more stories that give it. There's also uh, more ancient mythology. There's flooding is always hubris. The gods are fed up with the noise that we make. That's hubris. And they say, oh, let's get rid of them. Uh, Noah is not hubris with damn sinners. They, they haven't read, they, did they understand? Yeah, the, the flooding in, in the Genesis, Genesis comes right after the creation. It's very, very soon. God creates the world, and then the human being, he says what, the, he tells, he tells us what we, we should do, and he makes an assessment. Oh God, no, that's just completely wrong. And he floods them. So why, what's happening in Miami? Are they all crazy? <coughs> this is also an, an image of water. It's what they call Nerenschiff. Uh, 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 Nerenschiff, uh, the, the ship of, 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 of nuts. It, it's, it's, it's something really important in the, in the Middle Ages, really important. There's this legend, I don't know if it's, but, this was represent. There's a lot of representations of that, even by Jérôme Bosch, <coughs> where people would get rid of the crazy on the boat, you know, put them on the Rhine and get rid of them. And um, Foucault writes a lot about that. Foucault writes. Uh, Michel Foucault writes something really interesting about that, which we, I, I, I want to quote now because we may have to keep it at its, you know, the corner of our mind. This. Is that just after the plague um, in the Middle Ages? And the plague, according to Foucault, is the first moment in, in Occidental history where, in the name of God, the community, the group of humans, became able to get rid of one part of, alienate one part of the group of, of humans and say, in the name of God, you're no longer part of us because you. You, you are blessed with the plague, because the plague could only come from God. And so, uh, c'est le début de l'aliénation. It's really interesting, it's because uh, when you do that, you're placing, and it's exactly what, what I was saying to, to begin with, you create a mental tool that allows you not to see something anymore, because it's, it's disruptive. It's the, uh, well, uh, you, can, you see exactly that when you drive from the airport. Uh, as you're entering town, there's, there's a part of town made of plastic bags that you just do not want to see. Or are they blind? Now, this is a picture that will be maybe Latinos will be familiar with that. This is a this is a Campos with Visuales del Toro, uh, 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 a fighting wound can be fought by a human being because he does not see in certain zones. So uh, it's the idea of the blind spot, that you can place something in the blind spot, no dead end on the wall. So are they crazy? Are they blind? Or are they just making the cow? It can be under the very, uh, of, of three, because uh, most of the stakeholders in the real estate boom, certainly, uh, certainly the most important ones, they have sea level rise calculations in their business plan. They know they want to have sold everything before people stop worrying about it. Now, can they be blind? Is it possible that at least <coughs> the market, the, the small people, or the, even the rich people who buy the units, small people, you, you won't see it, you know, average people, you won't see them, they're way west, and then very uh, lucky ones, let's say, uh, up there. Is it possible? Can they be blind? to that problem of seawater. 
because this only gives you so much information. I mean, oh damn, it's so close. I have one theory, which is that this movie, this uh, incredible, is so stunning that it disqualifies any 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 notion of sea water rise. I mean, it, these are two things. It's an oxymoron. Oxymoron? Oxymoron? It, it, it. We're going to be flooded. Real estate is booming. That's an oxymoron. There are two terms that don't work together. But if you look into it, this is what it looks from inside. <coughs> this is not as nice a picture when you, when, you know, when you go inside Miami or inside Miami, uh, Breaker, which is south of Miami, the part that is really developed. This is what it looks like. This is what it is. You can even see pedestrians. That are fine. If you, it, it's small. Everything is within walking distance. It's really small. Are we talking about the same? This is, this is a, a rendering. This is what uh, architects do in order to sell you. So this is this is a, uh, this is like a, 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 a Pittsburgh movie in Metropolis. This is the people from above, and this see these are the people <coughs> who are dwelling in, in down below. And there's a tradition. I wanted because there was a rendering. I wanted you to look at these renderings. Um, <coughs> Miami is, has architecture by you know all the rock stars of architecture, Zaha Hadi, Renzo Piano, Renzo Piano is the previous one, uh, Omar, and Colhas, Herzog and Laurent, they are all there. But look at these pictures. Look at the difference between the rendering and the reality. And all the print rings you see of that uh, building, the last one she died uh, when she was uh, on the construction. construction they show it without the name. It, it actually has name. So it, it is all, it's, it's, it's going to be impressive from the ocean and not that impressive. But what, it, what is the continuity between these pictures and the previous ones. Look at that. What struck me on all the renderings done by architects in order to sell the stuff is that they keep the same lousy public space, the real one, the lousy real public space. They, this is a rendering. This is a Porsche. That's the only difference. But I don't see any difference. It, it, do I want to walk there? Is it? <coughs> this is the past of my life. This is a site that was built before um, La Conquesta, La Conquista, by the Tequestas. The Tequestas were Caribbean Indians, and they, they, would, they were living on the islands. But they, they would have settlings everywhere a, a river sh shooted out into the sea because they needed the fresh water. You can imagine that they, they, they would probably sit, sit around and talk. I don't see why they would sit and talk here. And one of these, they're called the uh, Miami Rings. One of the developers found a ring and he asked the authority if, 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 if we could break it down because it was he needed to build it. I said, yeah, come on, man. you have another one. <laughs> he didn't even see it as, as an asset. You know, for it. <laughs> now look at that. This is another public space. Well, I, 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 I didn't choose one that no one knows, but I could have taken the home class in Brazil, because it, of course, gets an account in Siena. That 
that there's no blue, that, that, you don't see that it's there. If you see it, it's at, at the corner of the building because there's a little more uh, uh, room on the pedestrian wall. And there's a few guys there growing organic squashes and, 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 and they have it, you know, they have a, a, an organic market for Monday from, from three to five. So, what happened? There was what there's something here, but I, 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 I didn't know who I was going to talk about. What the hell was it? Huh? What happened to the public space? Where is it? And what strikes me when I talk with Americans and I say, where is your public space? It's there. And they point to the street. And I say, hmm. Is that it? And when, when I say, don't you have a, the, the, the place that they call piazza or plaza, but usually shopping malls, mm -hmm. you know, where, where can you just sit? Is, is there a place that is meant for doing nothing? That it does not produce anything, not even movement? <laughs> well, there is one. There's an incredible public space. In mind, it's called the same thing. It's incredible. It's right in front of. It's they're very lucky. They're blessed. They have that right in front of their eyes. And maybe as long as they don't see it, it's safe. <laughs> but it's incredible because this is like Grand Canal in Venice. Except there's no activity. They don't even use it for local mobility. So you could connect Miami Beach to any part of Miami on the coast line on boats. When uh, one of the first settlers uh, in, in, in Covenant Road, uh, Munn, William Randolph Munn or something, Barnacle is, is the name of the place. It's a very beautiful mansion. On the, on the sea. When he was living there, first of all, there were less people living on land, on, on the continent, than on the islands. Because the islands um, were made, you know, that's the line of dunes that emerged from, from the ocean all along the, the east coast of America, from, from, from Long, Long Island all the way down to Key West. So if, if you fly, you can see that there's this line parallel to, to, the, to the continent. And this is sand, and that's why that's why it's 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 nice to live on. It's not moors or marshes. It's, so Manu, when he was living in, in Coconut Grove, had no other way of moving than on his little boat. He was moving on a little boat, on a little sailboat. <coughs> it's interesting to compare things, you know, and it's always interesting to look at history. <coughs> Take questions. Probably settled nearly a little more than 500 years before Christ, but instinct when the white man arrived and imported his diseases. They, they died from that. By, by the time Spaniards uh, settled, they were all dead. Seminari. They are considered a tribe. They're actually not a tribe. They're mostly Creek Indians, runaways. Then the Seminon comes from Simaron. They, they were renegades. They were running away. And they, they were running away by other Indians who were running away from the water. And they arrived there and were left in peace because it was considered impossible to live there. Mosquitoes, malaria, uh, alligators, no land. Their houses were built on, 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 on stilts. And if so that and they would live above so that if the water would come too high, they would be above water. And when the winds were too strong, they'd take the roof, the, the ceiling down and they would uh, crawl under the ceiling, you know, like a turtle. Uh, under the roof, I'm sorry. And this could always be replaced. I mean, there, there was not much to do. 
they are the only tribe to never have signed a peace treaty with the US government. In the first place, because the US government didn't bother about the Evergreens. When they started being interested in the Evergreens, there were three wars, the three seminar wars. And the US government didn't win. They, the losses were too big. They couldn't fight the way they, they were used to fight against people who were on small boats, who could move, who were doing guerrilla fighting, and whom they could not find. So they never signed a peace treaty. And very interestingly, um, there are also black semi-oids, because uh, slaves who escaped from plantations in the south, in the, or, or were free from, the, uh, from slavery, joined them. And, and so you have, um, it's, it, it's, it's an interesting cross-breeding uh, of, uh, of uh, what the government considered renegades. History. Then came the white man. And the white man didn't come like the Seminole because he had no better choice because he was running away. And he chose to live <coughs> in a very, very unwelcome habitat because he thought, you know, here at least I'm safe. But the, 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 je the jeopardy, the menace of water is more acceptable than the menace of being slaughtered. And then came the, the white man. So the story of Miami is, is, is actually a story of a few pioneers. The Miami as we know it now. A few pioneers. Brigham, Flagler, Fisher, uh, uh, who else? There's a lot of them. The one, there's one whose name is forgotten or the least uh, spoken of is Ju Julia Tuttle. Julia Tuttle, um, is in, is, is, it's in, she's really interesting because she is the one who really created Miami, but she's forgotten for a, a, a very good reason, because she didn't succeed, she didn't become rich. Julia Tuttle came to Miami because she lost everything elsewhere, and her parents had land there. And she came to a farm uh, with that land. And she heard that um, Henry Flagler had, was building the uh, 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 East Coast Railroad all the way down to Palm Beach. Why was he building the railroad all the way down to Palm Beach? Because he was also building the biggest hotel I've ever seen in the world for the breakers in Palm Beach for his very rich friends to come down and enjoy tropical climate. Very interesting. Miami is the only town in the Western world with such a tropical climate. There's no other one. It's the only one. And so he built this huge hotel in Palm Beach for his friends, the Vanderbilts, the Carnegies, the Guggenheims, uh, 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 to come and, and have a good time in the hotel. And, and he didn't think he would bring the hotel further south because I mean, the, the railroad, because the hotel it wasn't further south. And then she she wrote to him many times saying, "Come on, come down, bring it all the way down to uh, Port Dallas, which was the name of the tiny island." And he wouldn't do it. But eventually, there was a, 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 an incredible uh, freezing moment. Uh, I don't I don't remember the date. And all the, all the orange uh, uh, trees froze all the way down to Palm Beach, but not as far down as Fort Dallas. And she is said, maybe it's a, a legend, she said to send him branches with orange blossom. And, and she, she told him, if you bring your railroad road down to Port Dallas, I will give you half my estate. And that's why she's forgotten, because she, she went completely broke. After bringing the railroad down to Fort Dallas, Flagler decided he would bring it all the way down to Key West. And so he started building it in the ocean. 
And that's extraordinary. It's an extraordinary piece of, uh, of human engineering. Hundreds of workers died, you can imagine. Most of them could not swim. This story, there's an incredible story about the Breakers Hotel. When, when Flagler was building the Breakers Hotel, he had workers. Of course, these workers were not at all the clientele, the business plan of the hotel, the, 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 the commercial uh, 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 target. And they had built little, you know, like a slum around the, around the site, the construction site, so they could help, they could, they could live somewhere. <coughs> and he thought, wow, I don't want these people in the neighborhood with my friends. So he invites them all to the, to the circus with all their families, and they all go to the circus. And while they're at the circus, he has all their barracks built. And then he has West Palm Beach built on the continent, not on, not, not on the island, separated by water. And the workers will be dwelling there, and, and West, West Palm Beach is the real town, whereas Palm Beach is for millions or billions. So Flagler did this railroad all the way down to Key West, but what's interesting is there was no money to be made. I mean, there's very few people living in Key West. It, 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 anyway, I mean, even if you develop these islands, the series of keys, they're small. And a hurricane in 1935 <coughs> destroys the railroad, and, 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 the, and the trailer goes in the water, and, and they decided they decide it's going to be not a railroad anymore, but a road, which still exists. If you look at CSI Miami, you will see an Horatio driving on that like, long. It's an incredible road. It's very, very beautiful. Now, history is interesting. What's interesting about this pioneering uh, uh, um, thing? is first of all that usually people who live close to water, they do it because they have no, in history, most of them did it because they had no better choice because they were running away and as I was saying, they choose to live on water because um, they, they're running away from, from, from uh, invaders. All they choose to, to live close to water because there's a change in environmental conditions. Or they choose to live close to water, like the people living on the deltas, because it's 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 very rich soil. And in well, I mean, the human being needs fresh water. He needs so he lives close to water, but not dangerously close to water. There's a there's a there's a, 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 a French uh, from Nice, uh, the town of Nice, a song, a traditional song that says, "Flat of water." But stay on hard soil, and you know it's nice to be by the water, but, and they have this tradition. But people have the other thing that's interesting about about this uh, pioneering history of of, of, uh, of uh, Miami is pioneers. They do not come because they have no other choice. They have they have all the possible choices, and they come. Those who live close to water because they have no better choice. Have to. They know they cannot. They cannot adapt this environment, so they have to adapt to it. But these pioneers went absolutely not in, in those schemes of uh, of, of mining. They, they came to adapt this environment to their project of, of farming, of uh, leisure, of uh, of uh, real estate development. That's why they came. They they they, they, they came on a personal. Agenda, and you could say on an extractive agenda. What happens elsewhere in the world? Let's look for a little inspiration. That's the Kraken. It's, it's, uh, people don't get close to the water, and they have developed incredible mythology. Uh, Kraken, Leviathan, Cari de Silla, the creature from the Black Lagoon, even uh, Jaws, uh, the Abyss. You know, recent movies tell of our instinctive fear of water. So that this is just to confirm that people who live close to water are exceptional people. They stand out. The Netherlands, the best movie. 
Um, I don't remember his name, but one of the inventors of, of cartography was, was Greek, and, and, and he did the maps of the Roman Empire, I think in 300 after Christ. And when he came all the way to the Netherlands, he said there were more, more people living, dying from war than from fights between from war. Uh, more, uh, uh, more or less 30% of Holland is, is uh, more than a meter below sea water level. So they've, they've, used, they've, they've been dealing with it from the most um, remote <coughs> times. And the water issues is embedded at every level of government from national to local and in the different uh, powers. Uh, uh, ex executive, legislative, and judiciaire, because of the uh, judiciaire, because of the uh, because of liabilities. This is interesting because it does look a little like your Flanders uh, training. Hank Ovin, who's the one of who is the, is the water specialist, Dutch water specialist, he's now the ambassador um, of uh, the Netherlands to the United Nations for uh, water issues and who's employed by the US government in Washington. Instead of Miami, if these people don't get their act then it's going to be a new Atlantis within 30 years. And people said to him, listen, 30 years, you're crazy. We can't look that in that distance. Holland, in 86, and the big Congress of, uh, of, uh, about climate change, even though climate change is documented, you know, has well, I've been researched, and climate change due to human activity is something that is known uh, ever since we developed in industry. The first ser ser researches are done in, in, in the 19th century. But it was public in 85 in Vilma, Austria, where the, the for the first time, the World Meteorologist Organization came up with a lot of figures and saying that this is happening. Um, and, and, and this would cause those, uh, the, those consequences, such as sea water level. And Holland, in 86, there's a first uh, uh, survey on what would be the consequences of a five meter sea level rise within 100 years. So they're very proactive. They, 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 they look into 100 years, and they did it the year after the info on, on climate change before public. Venezia. One could certainly say that in Venice there's a tradition of building the water. Uh, it's, a, it's a tradition. What is certain is, is that the Venetians have accepted they would be flooded twice a year with Aqua Alta. And, and, and that is something, if you live in Venice, which is very difficult to do, basically, you, not due to water today, but due to excessive tourist, tourism. Uh, if you live in Venice, you live in water. I, I tend to say, you know, the worst that could happen to Venice is water decline. If there was no more water, it'd be just a normal city. Beautiful, but not so special. Um, and, and, and Venice seems to be living, I, I, I like to put it this way, it, it seems to be living as if it had cut a deal with Poseidon. Uh, and a deal which is a give and take deal. So not a combative um, uh, attitude towards water, but more of a give and take. There are other places in the world where people live on water. There's one in incredibly in interesting, I've, I've not, not been there, I, I, I hope I can go this year, for Makoko. Makoko is now the biggest floating slum in the world. It's in the Lagos Lagoon, near the city of Lagos. 85,000 people are said to live there. <coughs> <coughs> yeah.
they were predicted to die from diseases, they were predicted that they would fight against each other, they were predicted that they would have problems because they had no access to, uh, to uh, fresh water, uh, to sewer, to electricity. But it works. It's self-government. Um, the authorities of Lagos hate it. They say it's the shame, it's, it, it, it's the shame of their city. Now, Lagos wants to be the Manhattan of Africa. And they say the slum is a shame of Lagos. There's another, there's another reason why they want to get rid of it. They say, well, you know, the poor people can live there. How about the rich people can live there too? And so they want to develop it now. And it's incredibly interesting to see how people with no better choice and very little um, technology and financial capacity can live with water by you know just accepting to live with water. There's another town that's interesting, not very far from that's called Gambier. Gambier is in Vienna. What Makoko was a fishing village to begin with. Gambier was actually built by people running away from slave hunters. This was Daome. Daome caused the ruin of Africa because <laughs> kings of Daome took all the population and sold it to the triangle commerce. And, uh, and so there was no one. The elite stayed with no one to harvest the crops and, 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 and milk the cows. And, and, and they got rich by selling their own people and it, it caused their own ruin. So Gambia was built by people trying to uh, run away from slave hunters. Slave hunters were soldiers, they were fantassins, as we say in French. They could not swim. These could not swim either, but they learned to swim because they, it was their best option. And to this date, Gambia is incredible because when um, the tax collectors come to collect taxes, the, the people living in Gambia say, why would we take, we, 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 why would we take taxes? We don't have electricity. We don't have water. Um, we don't use your roads. We use little boats. And they said that the, the um, ambassador of Benin uh, in Belgium um, told me that, and he was born there, he said they, they all jumped into the water. And there's no one, they can't find anyone to collect tax from because they're all in the water. And in the past, they used to tilt the boats from the tax collectors, and the tax collectors would draw, draw. <laughs> And what's interesting is that he seems to be um, uh, 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 surviving way better than, uh, than, than Kotunu, near, the nearby capital, to water erosion. It can't be eroded because it's floating and it's on stilt. Either floating or on stilt. Could I ask you? Could I ask you? When you see this picture and you compare it to Miami, do you see any anything better or worse about one situation? What, what I see is that probably Gambier must have looked, what I think is Gambier, probably Venezia looked like Gambier in 700 after Christ, when, when, when people started you know, settling and, and not going back to the, to the land, uh, running away from the Lombard. And probably in Miami, the Everglades, the, the Seminole villages, must have looked like this, this oh, we know it. You showed the picture. Yeah. Those are the palafins. Yeah. And those are palafins. Exactly. Um, so so the, what, I want to say, what I want to say is what do these people do? these are sea gypsies. They, they they are in Indonesia and Thailand and they are said to live on water to have been living on water for three thousand years. There's no the first um, Portuguese uh, who saw them um, uh, 500 years ago, met them, they were already living on water. They have no belongings, no personal belongings. So on their boats, you can see they, 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 they cannot hide any belongings, so they cannot be, they cannot be stolen by pirate, pirates because they have nothing. And they don't own land. And they, they have a very hard time now with modern property law and immigration laws. 
And since they cannot go on their burial sites, they did have burial sites or holy sites, and they cannot, they can no longer go there because they cannot claim property of those. It's, it's, it's incredible. They've been living on water for so long that they have developed incredible underwater vision. Huh. It's, 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 it's something that is, you, you, it's, it's, a, it's a scientific fact. They, they see underwater nearly as well as a dolphin. But they've been there for 3,000 years. Uh, it seems a lot, but I, I, I looked for data and, and their legends, you know, what the, and the myths, what they refer to, should be dated around 3,000, you know, in, in China was already uh, something really important in, in 1,000 before Christ. So they've always lived there. And, and, and what's incredible is when the 2004 tsunami happened, they felt it in the water before anyone any scientist said it's happening. So they, they fed the earthquake, and they said, the wave is going to come. Nobody believed them. It took a few hours, and most of them survived. The wave was incredible. They, 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 they survived the tsunami, but they can't survive modern property and immigration laws. <laughs> then there's another incredible thing. The source of inspiration, south of Key Biscayne, actually south of Cape Florida, there are houses on stilts on a, on a high sandbank. It's called Stiltsville. Now, if you look at Stiltsville, you can't really understand why it exists. That's because it's such an American story. The very rich people during prohibition built these houses outside of territory, territory of war in order to get drunk. They'd have Jews come from the Bay, from Barbados, or Barbados, on, on ships, and they, they'd, they'd invite their friends, and they would get pissed. But what's interesting is these houses also survived hurricanes. They, this, this, there's seven left to this day. There were 27. They survived the 92 hurricane. They, they, they've been there for a long time. If, if they're not, no longer there, most of the time it's because they were not maintained properly. Okay, that's. <laughs> <laughs> but what, what I. So the whole aim. Of comparing Miami to uh, uh, Tequestas and to uh, Seminoles and then to see Gypsies, uh, to Venezia and to Holland, points to one thing. If you only believe in private ownership of things and of land, then you cannot, first of all, deal with public space, but you cannot deal with anything that is actually common, neutralized. You, it, 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 it goes in a blind spot, even a menace. And that's what's incredible. The menace of water is not an enemy that you can say, he's the bad guy. It, there's no one responsible for it. There's no one you can bring to court. It's water. You, you can't divide it, you can't build a fence on it. And I think, but I, I, I come to the conclusion that if you can't think of things that are neutralized, that are common, if you can no longer think these things, because you, you don't have the proper cultural tools, then you can't defend yourself against this menace. Now, you, you can also see it very simply. You can see how does the Western world function? Okay, it operates on private property, of course, but also, yes, and certainly after World War, world War II, and, and after Hitler and Stalin, you could say it's the end of ideology. 
<coughs> reason goes in a dead end with Stalin, and romanticism goes in a dead end with Hitler. And then what, what do we do? We say, well, you know, let's not think about the future anymore. It's too dangerous. Let's not try and make the, the, the world a better place to be, because that's done by crazy people. So after that, we rely on only on the individual. On technology, because it helped win the war with the bomb. On market, as the only way to say something is good or wrong. It's the only benchmark. It's the only... God is dead. And so... And, and, and we've gotten rid of... In the Western world, again, of any qualitative, quality. we only deal with quantity. I don't, I don't know how to put this. We we have developed a patterns of thinking where we say, listen, I, I cannot uh, I cannot talk with you on about qualities because that's very personal. But we can talk about quantities because we can we can agree on meter, on foot. We can agree on. Um, you know, we can agree on these things there, uh, and, and there's, but if you look at Japan, for instance, the way of counting things in Japan, you don't count them the, the same way if they are long or short. It's, they have other names. One for a short thing is not the same one as the one for a long thing. Why not? It's just a question. And at least if you count them, the, 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 the people say, oh yeah, you're talking about, you're counting a long thing, you're not counting. So you're, you're, you're telling about the quality of the thing, not, not, not only of a thing, but you're mentioning the quality. But if you, if, if, if you only rely on, 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 on quantity, again, and, and that's what the market does, it doesn't say this is better, it says there's more. And so you have, what did I say? Individual, technology, the market as the only way to tell good from, from wrong, at the end of the day, the, the, le seul arbitre, and bureaucracy. <coughs> How can you deal with something like seawaterized danger with these tools? <coughs> the, one person cannot do anything against it. And an aggregate of individuals cannot do something against it. Technology is not the new provider of miracles. It is not a sort of new god, bienveillant, good willing, who out of nothing suddenly produces a miracle. Like David Graeber, I don't know if you read it, but he's very funny because he said, Technology was really disappointing by the end of the day. When I was a kid, I, I, I expected that when, when I grew up, they'd be flying cars. Where are the goddamn flying cars? I expected to be, I, I expected teleportation to be invented, like in Star Trek. None of that. Only the cell phone. <laughs> <laughs> and bureaucracy, by definition, cannot deal with nullity. It cannot. It, it, it can only deal with you know uh, embedded procedures. So my, my feeling is that already that is a, is, is a good enough reason to place things in, in dead ends. But this is something that is constructive. I mean, people tell you it's always been like that. That is not true. Not only is it all, not, not only is it not true that it's always been like that. It's not like it's it's even not like that everywhere today. Very poor people like in Mokoko, they have to neutralize and, and, and they have to work together. They have that's the better option. They know that alone they can't do anything against the seawater and the rice. So this is I, I think I'm, I'm going to end it here. But what I'm my purpose is to say, and I want to continue uh, thinking about this, that maybe maybe um, that's the problem. When you can't think something that is shared, when you can't face a danger that you also share, <coughs> and maybe turning menace into opportunity, as Americans would say, 
it should be understood in another way. Uh, the menace can be the opportunity to get your act together, which humans have always done. I mean, when when um, when when you know when the shit hits the fan, people get together to clean it up. And and, um, and and every time there's a catastrophe, it seems so easy for people to get together and face it. Thank you. They want to talk a little bit. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, are there, are there questions? Should, can I just say something just to open? It seems to me that there are a bunch of things that you put together that are extremely interesting. One is the tension between the value of the real estate and the menace. That's true also in California. The insurance company will not insure your property anymore, but the value of property is going on a lot. And it's certainly that it's going to be a devastating earthquake coming in a short while. So that's <coughs> clearly... Uh, There's one difference which, which is interesting, is that the medicine in California is not really visible. Whereas in, in Florida, people can see the water. Right? Yeah. They can see the effect <laughs> Yeah, of but the everybody knows that. I mean, that there is a, it is visible in the sense that there is some sort of, you know, construction of the menace by I mean, the public authorities say you should have the water, you should be ready, you should do this and you should do that, and the kids in school are prepared. Yes. To, so, 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 so there is, you know, but, but still, you know, it doesn't reflect on the real estate market, so that's a big question mark. Second, I mean, it's not really true that in the bureaucratic slash market model you cannot see the thing, and you cannot actually, in Venice they invested 30 billion uh, Euros in the robbery, right. basically robbing public money out of the construction. It's Mosa, you know, that the thing, uh, know, these barriers know. that are supposed to actually be able to rise with the tie and block the, the high water. That is a, it's a gigantic, you know, construction of a fraud that has been uh, has been uh, making the whole economy of Venice, the public part of the economy of Venice, working in the last. Actually, you're right. Tenor. In, in Holland, seawater. Rise is dead by the administration. They dead with by the administration. So it's 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 within the tasks of uh, the bureaucracy. Yeah, but the, and the, but but that was because it was thought before as a task of the bureaucracy. But the, in, in Venice, it's really the usual typical private property versus government and bureaucracy model that had generated this monster thing of a major project. You know, to draw resources basically from the public into the private by constructing a useless thing. Does it exist? No, no, no. Yeah, yeah, it does exist. It doesn't, it yeah, work. It's, it's in the making. It's been in the making for a long time. And yeah, it, it exists. It doesn't work, but it exists. Absolutely. I mean, it's a huge project. And, 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 and so, that's, so, so, there, there, so there, there is this, uh, and there is a question basically of long run versus short run, it seems to me. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. So, so institutions capable to reflect the long run or to any way worry about the long run are incompatible with the current model of selection of political elite. Exactly. You're, you're not going to make votes on something that will happen 30 years from now. You're worried about the next election. That's, that's, yeah. that's, that's another, yeah, of course, that's the other problem. It's the political uh, calendar. Uh, and in a way, you could say, you're right about this, you could say the only way to have, in that system, to have long-term foresight is to have your administration address these matters because it's not subject to election. But then what happens in Florida? The water administration in, in, in Holland is not elected, in fact. No, no, no. Right. And there's, a, there's a huge water administration in Miami. In the Miami is said to be the biggest plumbing system in the world. But the governor of Florida, Scott, who's elected, <coughs> forbids state officers to speak of climate change. They're not allowed to do it. Yes, so there's, it's, it's also the, the, the relationship between uh, the, the politics and, and administration that's interesting there. Um, the, the, the fact, the fact that the authority can say you're not allowed to speak about it, about it is incredible. You have another question.